And I'm Ethan. And today we are at Steamworks Coffee Shop. And we're going to learn how they make their coffee beans, beans, how they make their coffee in general. So, yeah. So, this is like a behind the scenes. Interviews, you know. Just a behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah. Like Ethan said. Alright, we'll see you in the next Hey guys, we're back. And this is John, the owner of Steamworks, this beautiful, magnificent coffee place. So, we're going to ask, ask some him some, some questions. Why did you name this place Steamworks? Steamworks, so that's a good question. So there's two reasons. One is that we use a lot of steam when we make coffee and espresso drinks, like lattes and things of that nature. And a long, long time ago in this area right here, there was a place that was used to heat all the different buildings around here. And they used steam to heat all these different buildings, like the municipal buildings. And they, they used to call it Steamworks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what inspired you to make coffee? Like open up this coffee shop? To open up this coffee shop? Um, well, coffee. I do love coffee. I do love coffee. I got <laughs> like the espresso machine that we have here on the counter. I had on my, on my counter at home for like three years. And it's like the size of a small car, right? So it's pretty big. So it was a pretty, pretty good hobby at home. I used to roast coffee at home. And, and then... Uh, I just started, I, I guess what it was for me was that when I was younger, I didn't understand why different places tasted better than other places and I wanted to try to figure it out. And so I started to do research and started to kind of figure out what you could do to make your coffee taste better. And then I would just start doing that at home. Yes. Yeah. What else you got there? What is your favorite drink to make? What's my favorite drink to make or to drink? And drink. And drink. <laughs> My favorite drink to drink is probably either an Americano or like a Cortado, or we call it a Gibraltar. I've never had one of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so a Cortado or an Americano is what you would get if you go out of the country and you ask for a cup of coffee. Most places, most countries you cannot get coffee. a regular cup of coffee. Everything is made with espresso. Like a 24 yeah, so if you have an American that goes to, let's say, Italy, they give you what's called an Americano, which is espresso with hot water. So it makes like a cup of coffee out of the espresso. The Gibraltar is fun to make as well. That is your two ounces of espresso, this is how we make it, two ounces of espresso, and then about two or three ounces of steamed milk. So it's a short drink, it's a small one, it's only about like, you know, five ounces or so. And um, it has a nice strong coffee flavor, but you also have like some steamed milk in there too. Uh, like where are you located and what are your hours? So we are right on the Erie Canal, it's right outside of our front door, uh, 51 Canal Street. And what's nice about this area is that it's become uh, just a place for people to hang out. Uh, there's nice other places nearby, like uh, the ice cream place right down here. That's right on the same strip. There's a farmer's market right outside our door on Saturdays. And it's just a really fun little area in Lockport. We really enjoy it. And we're open Monday through Sunday, really. So Wednesdays we're technically closed so that I can roast coffee. And we're pretty much open from like seven in the morning till nine at night. Because we've got board games and stuff for people to play. This is where we can weigh out the coffee and the water. And then we have a tower that keeps the water at the, just the right temperature so that we can make the perfect cup of coffee. And right now we're roasting like I think eight different coffees. So what, how it works is when someone comes in, they can pick the coffee they want and we actually just brew a single cup for them or a small carafe for them. So it just all happens in like this area? Yeah, everything happens here. We use the kettle and these little uh, uh, Kalita wave brewers and these carafes along with these scales 
And what's nice with these scales is they also have timers on them, so you can time your coffee or your tea to make sure that things are being done within the right time, because if any of those factors change too much, you can affect the flavor of the coffee. Oh. So you want to you want to make the best cup of coffee or tea that you can, and so all this equipment here helps us do that. So you balance like how much water you need and the amount of coffee? Yep. So we weigh out the coffee grounds and the water and all that jazz. Coffee grounds? Yep. Jazz. Oh, yeah, this is where we keep all of our coffee and grinders for, for doing pour overs. Wow. Just a pull out thing that I work Decaf. together. Yep. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. We just use this to toast stuff. And we do have a microwave to warm other stuff up. But this is the tower I told you about that helps us keep things at the right temperature. With coffee, you want it to be anywhere from 195 to 205. So we keep it at right around 204 because it just lasts a little longer in the kettle. Um, and then this is just a pre-brew brewer that we use for making regular coffee and a grinder that we use for if someone gets a bag of coffee and they want it ground. So all of our coffee is, is whole bean coffee. So you like sell coffee? Yeah, so in those bags over there, the brown bags, those are full of uh, like whole bean coffee that people can buy. If they don't have a grinder at home, then we'll grind it for them here. Oh, I forgot this part. This is, uh, of course, I think we just ran out, but this is our, our nitro uh, cold brew um, it looks, coffee. It looks like so a bullet. It kind of looks like what they would use for like soda or mm -hmm. beer oh, yeah. or something like that. And uh, what it is, is uh, we have cold brew coffee that we brew overnight. It takes 24 hours, and you brew it at room temperature. And then we'll take that cold brew, and we'll mix it with a little bit of water, because it makes it, it's very concentrated. So you can serve it cold like that, or you can put it in this machine, and it adds like super tiny bubbles to it, so it makes it almost like creamy tasting, even though it's just black coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Then if we keep going this way, we've got our roaster. This is just a, a micro roaster, I guess, micro batch roaster. Uh, it's called a fluid bed roaster because it uses hot air. We'll talk more about that, I guess, if we do a batch. Steam. But uh, basically, this is where we roast coffee. This is the exhaust so that all the smoke and everything else is not just kind of like floating around in here. How long does it take to do that? To, to, see, to make coffee? Yeah. Um, it takes about know, between 10 and 15 minutes from start to finish, depending on what I'm roasting and how long. Uh, and then here's our espresso machine. Our espresso machine, this is the one that I was telling you about that was on my counter at home for like three years. And so I, that's how I learned to make espresso drinks, and which is basically this size of a drink with no sugar. Um, some people will do sugar in it, which we do that, and then we call it a cortado. So it's kind of the same drink. One has sugar, one doesn't. So this is, you're making a Gibraltar? This is a Gibraltar, yep. Okay. Unless you want sugar. Do you want sugar or no Yeah. Sugar? You guys, of course, you want sugar. Do you want sugar? All right, so we'll do, we'll do a cortado. We'll show you how we do a cortado. It's, a, it's kind of fun, actually. So we're going to start out with our espresso. Who's, who's going to do our espresso for us? Me. You're going to do the espresso? Okay. So this is what's called a doser. What it does is a grinder, it grinds coffee, and then it doses, you pull this lever and it will put it in there. So if you hold that. Yep, yeah, hold that. So go ahead and pull that lever. Keep going. Go all the way back. There you go. There you go. Yep. There you go. That's enough. That's good. That's perfect. No, that's all right. It's all right. So then what we'll do is I'll, I'll pop this over here. A lot of places weigh out their espresso, but we find that it works out just fine with, with just evening it off just it. here anyways. So just, I'll let you leave, level it off. So you're just gonna go straight across like you're measuring out flour. Yep. Magnificent. Awesome. Just like that, yep, perfect. All right, so we'll set that aside, and then we usually just clean up the edges a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is, it's called tamp it. We're gonna smush it down. So straight, you're tamping. And you wanna do about 30 pounds of pressure, but that's hard to really that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's hard to really understand like what, how much pressure that is. Just push it down nice and firm. But what you really want to concentrate on is you want to make sure that it is uh, straight. You know, straight down, as straight as possible. So, that's pretty good. But another way you can do it is if you keep your elbow straight up in the air and push straight down, it helps you keep it nice and straight. Good. That looks good. And then, which, if you go like this, it's called polishing it. You take off that and then you polish it just a little bit more to get all the grounds nice and flat. Oh. See how that looks? Ooh. It's beautiful. All right. 
It's very flat. So now I'll bring that to the espresso machine. So now, what am I, what am I? <clears throat> you milk it. Oh, actually, uh, we're making the cortada, so we got one more step. Oh, oh, yeah. All right, so there is one more step for the cortada. We do this little, uh, we add a little sugar. We actually tamp it right into the espresso shot. Well, that's a lot of, that's big sugar. Yeah, this is the raw, raw sugar. Raw sugar. So what you want to do is just kind of give it a little bit of a shake. Just give it a little bit of a shake to smooth that out a little bit. Get it one nice level. There you go, that's pretty close. Just like that, All right? Now we're gonna push it down one more time. Just to get that, sure, there you go. That's good. Got it? All right, so now we're gonna take that and we're gonna start right around, like, I don't know, seven, 7.30, and, or whatever, not seven, I mean the seven. So it's like uh, right around the seven and bring it to like the six, okay? So go ahead and pop it in there, it's gonna lock in. It's gonna lock in 7.30 or eight right there. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. That's all right. That's all right. What? I drank it. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on to that, to that handle. And then push this way. All the way. Hard, hard, hard. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. Okay. Oh, so that's locked in. Now it's locked in. All right. So then we set the glass underneath. Our uh, this is a porta filter, so we're gonna set the glass right underneath. And then the you hit filter. that one. We're gonna hit the middle one. This is like a semi-automatic mach automatic machine where we could just pull whatever shot we want, but we're going to do this one that's going to be timed. It's going to do it all for you. So if you hit that middle one, it's going to give us approximately two ounces of steamed milk in there. Green beans. We're gonna yell at these beans. <coughs> so there, yeah, we're gonna roast them. So this is the green beans. What what you'll notice is that if you take two of these and put them together, that's what you'll find inside um, a coffee cherry because coffee is actually a cherry, and that's what's inside the cherry. It's like a, a pit or seeds. And what they do is they take the fruit off and then they take the seeds out, rinse them, and dry them, and then they send them to me. Oh, All right, so after they're dried like this, then we can roast them. Is it like that? Yeah. And so what happens is that, you know, uh, every, because it is a fruit, like you know how you have lots of different types of apples and they yeah. taste different? Yeah. Because it's a fruit and you get a lot of that kind of fruitiness from the, the fruit itself, you, every coffee does taste different. So you can like eat it. For the most is part. Is that like how many pounds? This is about four pounds, so that's how much we're going to roast today. Yeah, well this is what's called the hopper. We're going to put the green beans in here. And then this is the actual roaster. It uses hot air and it pushes hot air up like a popcorn hopper. So the beans are going to be jumping around in here, kind of like popcorn. Oh. All right? And it'll actually sound like popcorn at some point too, so we'll talk about that. Oh. So then, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm checking the temperature of the beans. There's a probe that goes down here. Isn't it like in the 80, 90, 90. Um, that's a little different. This one, we're gonna get up into like the 400 degree mark. Well, it's gonna get hot. Yeah. 
Yeah, back up. <laughs> and then down here we control basically just two things. We control the wattage, which controls the heat for me. And we control this, which is the amount of air that we can we can uh, turn the fan higher or lower with that. All right. And then over here is what's called our, it's a chaff collection system. After everything is, um, uh, while it's roasting, uh, it, there, it collects there? like this papery chaff or like silver skin is what they call oh. it. So that all goes up into here and it gets filtered through this. Here, I'll show you what it looks like actually, the chaff. Um, kind of looks like that. Oh, it looks like, like the tea. Yep. Oh, and so this yeah. bag catches that for me. So that it doesn't go outside. <laughs> because everything else, the hot air and everything else will come through this and then up and then out of the building. So like that would go out too. Yeah, so that would go out too if I didn't have this little chat collection system here. Alright? And the last part of it is this here. This is what's called this is a cooling bin, I guess. So after we've roasted coffee, we're gonna throw it in here. And there's a, uh, a little, little thing there, which once I open that, it'll pull cold air through What's inside of there? the beans. So we're gonna put beans in here. Um, and then once we open this, it pulls all the, the cool air from the room through the beans and it, and it cools the beans down for us. Part of roasting is you want to cool those beans down as fast as possible too. So once you've roasted it, you don't want it to continue to, to roast. Yeah. Any questions? No. No? Okay, it's a lot, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to flip this on. It's going to be a little bit loud. So we have to talk loud. Yeah, you're going to have to talk loud. So we're going to have to flip this one on too. This is the loud one.
All this information will be linked in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and click that bell.